Hey guys, how's it going? So, I'm in Japan, you know, I'm at a world's after party, I'm kind of sitting there, you know, minding my own business, when I can't help but notice, Vu is relentlessly tinkering with this bimetal yo-yo he recently got. Normally, I would have ignored it, but it was the world yo-yo contest, I hadn't bought anything, and, well, naturally, I walked up to James Reed, who is part owner of Axis, handed him 1,200 yen, and bought myself a... Pulsefire. A Pulsefire is a bimetal yo-yo that has been designed by Tyler Heesh and James Reed for about over a year. I actually had the chance to try one while I was in BAC, but that was still in its prototype phase. They were dinging it around. It wasn't really a established yo-yo yet, so I was pretty curious as to how it would play after all the kinks had been worked out and the final product had been made. So without further ado, what are the specifications? Okay. Diameter 55.90 millimeters, width 42.88 millimeters, gap width 4.44 millimeters, weight 64.7 grams, bearing size size C, and it comes stock with a center track bearing, uh, and response 19 millimeter yellow CBC pads. Thank you, yo yo expert. So the pulse fire has a bimetal construction. It's got a 7075 aluminum body and stainless steel weight rims, like most of the bimetals on the market today. The colorway I have is the Midnight Cotton Candy, which looks like so. As you can see here, I'm not really sure if you can tell, but the anodization on mine has been wearing out, wearing thin to where like the bright pink is now basically silver almost. So the anodization has seen some wear and tear. I mean, to be fair, I have been traveling a lot this year, and you know, this yo-yo has probably seen the inside of a pencil case, more x-ray scans, drops, dings, and pretty much spent a lot of time on the road. More, more time than most of my other yo-yos have, but I mean, a lot of my other yo-yos were still put through the same conditions and their anodization hasn't worn away quite as obviously, so the fact remains, the anodization doesn't hold up too well in the long run. Uh, another thing was my pulse fire did come stock with a center track bearing. Um, I've actually got a Crucial 2 bearing in here at the moment. Basically, while I was traveling, um, the center track bearing started to get really loud. I could have easily cleaned it, but uh, because I was on the road and didn't want to get arrested with having copious amounts of lighter fluid in my luggage, I waited until I got home, but never really did that. So basically, I've got a Crucial 2 bearing still inside. Uh, the finish on the Pulse Fire body is kind of like a mix between uh, a bead blast and like a, a completely metallic finish. So basically, it's uh, as you can see here, it has a very matte kind of look, but it doesn't have any of the uh, <coughs> it doesn't have any bead blast finish on it, which makes it feel kind of like a metallic yo-yo. So it's a matte looking finish with a glossy kind of feel. Weighs in at about 64.7 grams, which is very much on the light side, but um, when playing with it, I couldn't really detect any unusual feelings about it. So basically, if I were to take an estimate of how much it would weigh before I actually knew the actual spec, it would pro probably guess around 65, 66, which is, you know, in, in the normal average weight range. The, the Pulse Fire's um, metal weight rooms have a very subtle effect on the yo-yo's playability. Unlike the Dropnir, which you can really tell has, you know, weight rings and completely changes the, the kind of overall feel of the yo-yo, with the Pulse Fire, it's more of a subtle shift. Like most modern yo-yos coming from this era, uh, the Pulse Fire has a profile that's, you know, ideal to the tricks of this generation. So, low wall, you know, VOH shape, very wide profile. But one thing I've noticed is that while most bimetals are suited to the more extreme type tricks, the Pulse Fire tends to be a bit more of an all-rounder. So what I mean by that is that Shura can handle some of the intense stuff, you know, some of those really strenuous horizontal combos, some of those really fast combos, everything like that. But I've also realized that um, the Pulse Fire is quite good when it comes to, uh, you know, just your normal intricate tech combos, okay? And it can handle both, it's designed for both. And I couldn't really say that, you know, this is a stream yo-yo and this is a tech yo-yo. It's somewhere in between. It's a very versatile, all-rounder kind of yo-yo. Another thing i found is that because the weight rim, the weight distribution isn't too extreme on the rim, this yo-yo is quite good for regens. Uh, regens are pretty cool. They, you know, allow you to 
change the spin of the yo-yo in midair. I tend to do a lot of regens with this yo-yo, which is probably why the bearing gave out so quickly. Regens tend to um, wear out bearings very quickly, but eh, yo is meant to be played with. So my final thoughts on the Pulsefire is that it's a great yo-yo for its price. It ranks right up there with all of the other high-end bimetal yo-yos in the market. Playability, it plays like an all-round kind of yo-yo. It can take the extreme tricks and it can also take those long, intricate kind of tech combos. Some factors such as, you know, the anodization quality and the bearing quality could probably be improved. For a player like me, you know, anodization and bearings don't really matter. I've always got a few spare bearings lying around, it's no big deal. But for someone just beginning, that could be a really big issue. So that would probably be a good thing for Axis to look into. Either way, the Pulse Fires is cool yo-yo. You can throw any of the tricks you handle at it. It's an upper end yo-yo designed for the competition scene. So if you're curious as to getting a bipedal or you're just starting out and want to get something a, bit, a little bit high level, try out the Pulsefire. Probably won't regret it. Alright, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.